And we're back again, and we have a gentleman, his name is Santiago Camarena, and he has a book because he's an author. <laughs> Hi, Santiago. Hey, hey, nice, nice to, to you. have you here. Yeah, it's nice to be here. I'm happy to be here. I've been How hoping. did you hear about Central Valley Talk? I, uh, my sister had told me about it a while back, oh. and uh, I was always thinking of I should get on this show if I was possible, and I've seen a, an opportunity over on Facebook actually, and so I called them up and they said, "Yeah." Well, I emailed, and then they said, "Yeah, give us your information." That'd be fabulous. So I'm, I'm so, here. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here, and you're an author. Yes. And when did you ever first start thinking about writing? It's been a while back that I was wanting to write. I uh, uh, had started telling people, you know, that I was going to be an author. You know, I just started telling people. And uh, uh, at one point after, uh, while I was here in Fresno, that I got a proposition to do a book. Wow. And so I said yes, and uh, my work uh, took me to New Mexico. Because wow. the story is, is on a, a New Mexico native, mm. and it, it covers just the life story of a, of a man growing up. And the good thing about it is that a lot of it was documented, and, and it covers a lot of uh, human interests, uh, society uh, issues, and uh, it, it's a good uh, thing because it's all documented, and there's a lot of reference points where you could, anybody could... Uh, check as far as that goes of how this happened or, or why it happened, which is I think is a good tool for today's you know need for a lot of people in need to you know having troubled times in their lives you know and they're they're wanting to hear something good you know how someone was able to come out of this. Oh yeah. And uh, but uh, uh, the story is on his life and covers his loss of his father early on and then the issues with the single parent and his exposure to uh, uh, law enforcement and incarceration mm -hmm. and uh, the two main topics on the book is that uh, it covers the 1980 Santa Fe prison riot Ooh. which today is still the most brutal prison riot in oh America's history and this this man right here was uh, a negotiator that helped bring the riot to an end and was credited for uh, saving the lives of two prison guards. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that was, you know, a good thing. It showed leadership qualities even under dire conditions. Oh, I guess so. <laughs> and uh, so he uh, was released after that when his time was up. and. Uh, he ended up getting uh, accused of a police killing, so it, it also covers uh, uh, the murder trials of a young police officer. So those are the Gosh. two main topics, you know. Uh, and what is his name? The, the person's name is uh, Vincent Candelaria. This is my book. Mm. It, it covers uh, his whole life, like I said, and it, uh, it was a good therapeutic book to write as far as anybody who's living that kind of life uh, as far as you know because the person ended up conceding to himself that he was wrong in the way he understood or perceived life to be even though he was a leader in the category he was in <laughs> and so uh, wow. uh, for someone like that to do to be able to admit to himself that is, is a life-changing thing and you know oh, gosh, yes. he was able to uh, endure a lot of hardships in there where a lot of men wouldn't be able to endure as far as like five years of uh, solitary confinement which would be like in a oh. hole a dark room with yeah. nothing yes. and uh, it's actually outlawed that kind of treatment for uh, prisoners now, uh, in today's age Oh, really did? I didn't know that. And uh, during the riot, there was uh, uh, a writ for to change the rules and policies and the procedures of the prison. And uh, after the riot, that that writ became law, known as the Durant Decree. And uh, they did all the changes that uh, that were requested on the Durant Decree, and it made a big change for a lot of different uh, people back in 
uh, during that time. The riot was during the 1980s, mm -hmm. uh, in 1980. And so there was a lot of different changes. Uh, and the Durant Decree was, was what they went by for many years. But uh, now I believe they transitioned uh, into a different uh, law that it, it still has the Durant Decree uh, elements of the writ, but uh, it's well, what called is it, something What is this Durant Decree? Uh, explain that to us. Uh, a lawyer, uh, there was uh, inmates. Mm -hmm. They researched, and uh, because everybody had complaints, there was uh, complaints on uh, the medical issues, uh, visitation, mm -hmm. uh, classification of the inmates uh, as far as, you know, violent criminals along with first time mm -hmm. uh, uh, prisoners, you know, which made for a real dangerous, you know, exposure to the first time inmates as far as, you know, their, their safety. Yeah. You know, a lot of them, you know, uh, would uh, be uh, brutalized by either rape or, or beatings and exposed to drugs and alcohol just as though it was like on the streets and uh, uh. it was uh, it was a really uh, intense time during that right before the riot and uh, the person describes it uh, very well uh, I went my job I went over there and I had to live over there because I needed to keep contact with them and go interview him and speak mm -hmm, to him mm -hmm. and to make sure that I was still on track with this book and it was uh, it was therapeutic for me as well so uh, it was uh, something very good in my life and it, it helped me to want to be a better person help out people uh, so I volunteered for Big Brothers program and I also was uh, did a program for victims and offenders, which uh, concentrates on uh, the mediation for the offenders to not just necessarily get incarcerated; that they have a chance to make amends to the to the victims. Wow, which that's is important. a good program right there. I thought, mm -hmm. you know, for especially for the young children that they get exposed to incarceration and well, stuff so, like that. So, in in the the strength of this man has added to your strength. Right, that you've been able to do things, make changes in your life that you felt were necessary. Very much so. Uh, it's it's his story, and but I believe it's the story of many people all across America today. Oh, and, for sure. And uh, and they might not have the extremities that he was exposed to, but uh, it's the same story, just the same, and uh, to understand yourself better and be able to know that you're going to get through whatever hardship that you're going through uh, is a good thing to know. It gives oh, you strength. that's and for sure. And I, I think it's just so important that people start un trying to understand other people. And if they don't like what they're doing, just to say, you know, it's none of my business. They're doing the best they can. So instead of hating each other. Right. Yeah, uh, especially in, in today's age, every, everything's so volatile as far as when something starts going, you know, there's no control over what happens. Uh, it does cover uh, political issues, which there's a lot of conflict, and uh, uh, as far as the, the legal procedures that people uh, get exposed to, is, some of it is uncalled for. Oh, uh, for sure. It also covers media. Do me a favor and say the name so you so it's pronounced correctly. <laughs> <laughs> it's a French word and it's uh, used during the the uh, prospective jurors process uh, when they're going to be on a jury trial. Mm -hmm. These the jur the prospective jurors are put under oath and that oath is called voir dire. Voir dire. And it's used throughout America today. Well, this is fantastic. And uh, tell, tell them where they can get this book, because I'm sure a lot of people are going to be fascinated it's, by it's this. A, it's a good book, I think, for a lot of people on a lot of different levels, as far as just uh, inmates yeah. uh, for therapeutic, as uh, far as uh, lawyers for procedure oh, and yeah. policies, for uh, uh, law enforcement, for different, uh, uh, getting a different perspective from the other side. 
and for uh, it also covers uh, uh, judges' decisions and, and different uh, aspects of a court trial. That's what happens oh to people. And, uh, it, it covers a lot of different issues. So, uh, but where you could get it at is uh, on any uh, uh, bookstore actually with the, the ISBN number. Mm -hmm. as to which I submitted. Uh, I'm not sure if they have it up there on the screen. Uh, or just go off of the, the, the book name is for Dyer, V-O-I-R-D-I-R-E. Uh, the authors, me, Santiago Camarena, uh, either one of those uh, ways of uh, telling the bookstore owner if he could look for that book and you'd be able to order that. Oh, I think oh. it's great, and I'm so great that you brought it in today. And listen, the next book is a ride. Come on in again, because uh, yes. we want to really promote our our talented people here in this. Yes, valley. I sure will. I, yeah. Can I say one more thing? I forgot okay, to give sure. my uh, my uh, web page for the yes, book. Yes, my the web page. It, uh, the web page for the book is actually vordireseektruth.com. Seek and truth. and it has a page all for the book, and it tells everything about the book, and has the first chapter, so that you could. Oh, fantastic! So that would be great. It has thank a lot you of things. So much. All right. Can you come in again, please? I will. Okay. Okay. Thanks. We'll be right back.